Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Rook along with Jim McCormick with agmarket.net. And as we roll through the mid-session, we see everything to the plus side. And Jim, let's talk about the grain trade first. You know, how much of the bounce and especially corn and soybeans has been technical in nature versus the weather? Definitely a little bit of technical support. We found some support earlier in the week and filing a little bit of follow through. We are now taking out some chart resistance points, Michelle. Um, look at what the beans are doing. A lot of people are now talking to target talking about targeting the gap fill uh, right around the uh, 79 level. Same thing on the corn. We left the gap at the beginning of August up near 525. So a little bit of technical objective running on the charts. Fundamentally, we are going to get some of the hottest temperatures of the year in the Midwest next week. And that does have some people thinking maybe we're going to take some of the top end off of some of this crop, especially in the portions of the country that did not get rain recently. Right. And we're going to find that out when we hit the fields for the Pro Farmer Crop Tour. And so some folks are maybe positioning a little ahead of that, too, aren't they? There's no doubt about it. I think the theme this week, a lot of the trade was go out, producers, go out and look in your fields. Um, what you're seeing from the road, you may be unfortunately a little bit disappointed when you get into the field. Uh, we've seen some pollination problems, smaller ears and all that. So, yes, this Pro Farmer Tour next week is one of the biggest tours of the year. So it will give the market a better handle of what's actually out there um, besides what we've been seeing from the crop ratings the last couple of months. So it uh, should add a little bit of volatility into the, the trade as we go through the tour. So how much of an impact has the heat that we are having right now and that that we could have for the next week or two weeks, how much impact will it have on corn and soybean yields, do you think? It's going to kind of depend on where you're at in the growth cycle. Some areas are going to have a little bit more impact or some studies in Illinois that suggest in the month of August, if uh, you keep the nighttime temps over 73 degrees, you could lose up to a bushel a day. But it really kind of depends on where your growth are in that cycle of the growth. But in general, heat this time of year, not a lot of moisture is viewed a little bit friendly as it does hurt the crop. All right. Let me ask you technically, let me go back and you know ask if we get up into these gap areas, for corn and soybeans, are those areas where farmers should be doing some selling? I would definitely recommend looking to sell some. I and mean, the reality is this, we maybe be losing a little bit of bushels. Maybe we're a little bit surprised on this crop tour that's not out there. Maybe the yield is a little bit smaller, but the reality is demand is still very, very suspect on both the beans and the corn, especially the corn in my opinion. So I think in reality is we might lose some bushels, but we're losing bushels that there's no demand for in the first place. So this rally is probably definitely a selling opportunity. Yeah. Wheat is up as well today. So we do have some geopolitical concerns that are part of that, but are we also getting, you know, a little spillover in the wheat from corn and beans? A little bit of spillover from corn and beans. You have got some more uh, attacks going on in Russia, putting a little bit of of war premium back into the market, possibly. And then lastly, India is into the wheat market buying wheat from Russia. Traditionally, India is not a big importer of wheat. They're usually self-sufficient. They're importing up to 9 million metric tons. That will tighten the world wheat supply a little bit more. And right now, wheat, you know, wheat stocks to use in the exporting countries are now at 10-year lows. So uh, it's going to change the economics a little bit with India being an importer now. Yeah. You see, it changes it a little bit. How big of a game changer is it if they start buying from Russia since they normally do export? What is the signal that that is going to provide for the global customers and market? Well, what it means, plain and simple, if you're a traditional buyer from Russia wheat, and Russia is the big dog right now, leading an exporter right now, and you're planning on buying Russia wheat, India has been buying a lot of Russia crude oil. Russia's talked about selling this wheat at a discount. All of a sudden, that 9 million metric tons you were going to buy from the Russians, you can't buy it because they're selling it to the Indians. We're still struggling to get product out of the Ukraine due to the closer closing of the grain corridor. So that may mean more opportunities for maybe some less traditional exporters, primarily the United States. We have not been a big exporter of the wheat over the years. As our share of the world market has dwindled, this may allow us to actually get back into that market a little bit more. Jim, wheat market was really oversold. We had done some technical damage to, I mean, Chicago wheat, very close to contract lows again, wasn't it? Exactly. So we are a little bit oversold. And I would argue we've maybe taken a little bit too much weather pre or too much war premium out of the market. I mean, the reality is the Ukrainians have sunk or shot at a Russian warship. They've shot at Russian, um, you know, oil rig, oil ships. If they would happen to take out a grain ship or essentially attack one of the Russian grain exporting facilities, you could have a very volatile reaction to the upside. And let's move over to cattle. Uh, we started off weaker and we had some sloppy cash trade yesterday kind of pressing the market here, but a nice rebound. Um, nice to see here. 
are we negating some of the chart damage that we've done here, you think? We are negating it. We also have that big cattle on feed report here at the at the end of the week. And, uh, you know, I think the market's going to look in general, the supplies are going to remain relatively tight. So right now, Michelle, it is kind of a tug of war between tight supplies versus how much can the consumer be willing to pay up for it as he's starting to get ever more stretched according to all the economic readings. Yeah. Okay. Futures are also at a discount to the cash. And so that's going to be somewhat supportive here as we go forward. But what do you anticipate cash market will be like here the next couple of weeks? Because boxes have been moving higher because of some of this Labor Day demand, haven't they? Exactly. I think as we get closer to Labor Day, I think it's going to struggle in the cash market. Like I said, I think the consumer is going to start getting a little bit pinched. The reality is we've been freezing the uh, student loan debt for the last couple of years. That starts to kick back in here in September. The average uh, loan payment for uh, someone carrying that student loan debt is $400 a month. So all of a sudden that client or that you know consumer in essence, he's got to figure out where he's going to come up with that $400. In essence, he's got to pay off the loan. So is he not going to go out to eat? Is he not going to eat to hire cuts of meat? That's what we're going to find out. But uh, it could have an economic difference as the uh, as these uh, new changes take effect. Something to keep an eye on. And hog market up yesterday, up again today. So are we correcting our oversold status there? Or are we trying to rectify this discount futures have to the index? Exactly. A little bit oversold and definitely rectifying to the index. The, you know, the August market went off the board a lot higher than where these back months are. So that's also giving them a little bit of a target to continue to rally back up to where, uh, like I said, where the August went off at. All right. Thanks for joining us. That is Jim McCormick with agmarket.net. And that's where it gets found.